existence. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Radiant Black Podcast. This is a podcast focused on Radiant Black by Kyle Higgins, Marcelo Costa, Becca Carey, and Michael Basudel, as well as all things Masterverse. I'm your host, Bash, and I'm joined by my friends and co-hosts, Matt, Ali, and Charlie. How's everybody doing today? Great. Like uh, Whoopi Cushion, I'm filled with hot air and ready to let loose. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, doing great, too. This uh, was a great issue this week, and um, can't wait to get into it, guys. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing pretty good. Had a, had a good weekend uh, at Fan Expo this weekend before sc- starting school this week, so it's been kind of a blow this week, but at least got a good weekend to finish that off. Got some been getting some good comics this week and some big shows today we got she hulk today um except for lord of the rings tonight um yeah re- really excited for that actually um and yeah we got some harley quinn and an awesome an awesome issue to talk about so yeah really excited really excited for that oh yeah i was how was fan expo there i know kyle was supposed to attend and ryan but i don't think they ended up going did they no, un- unfortunately, unfortunately not. Um, but I, I still nonetheless had to represent all the radiant black gear. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I pulled out. I, I finally actually pulled out that radiant black bag from the box. Um, so I was carrying a bunch of shit around in that, and that was pretty sweet. Um, but no, it was good. Got a picture with Giancarlo Esposito. Uh, he was super nice. Um, on the way out, uh, Katie Lott's line um like black canary from arrow her her line was like completely dry so i went over and talked to her for a bit got a picture um and then got got to meet otley got a few things signed by him um michael Were cho as well. busy? was it busy for the hobbits there i know they had oh yeah the, the oh yeah yeah yeah, they, they they were they were busy. The the busiest was Stranger Things for sure. Like oh uh, yeah, yeah. Like Eddie Eddie and Vecna were there. The, the, those line, those lines were just crazy. Uh, Jean <laughs> Jean Carlo's line was crazy, but no, it was it was pretty like anxiety ridden at times. Like it was just like fucking like a, an entire center, just like shoulder to shoulder. Like you couldn't move anywhere. You just had to like <laughs> go full monster mode if you wanted to go anywhere. Like you literally just had to like truck your way through. But no, <laughs> got 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 through it okay. And, and uh, got some got some figures, some cool, uh, some old Kyle Rayner Green Lantern issues, and uh, yeah, overall had a had a really good time. What's the coolest cosplay that you saw? What's the most top of mind right now? What are you thinking of? <sighs> Stat- there was a sick Static Shock one. Oh, honestly. damn! At the top of my cool. mind, this I will say this year wasn't as good mm. as um, as last year. Last year, like there was there was this like uh, this Venom one. He was like a it was almost like a paper mache, but he used his arm and he had like a fake uh, symbiote coming out of his shoulder oh, that's and really cool. into a head. So he'd use that, and he had like a fake arm coming out of the sides. It, that was really cool. I saw like a peacemaker. There, there was some there was a lot of cool Mandalorians this year and stuff um homelander is getting some picture with Giancarlo, so uh that that's, that that stuff was super <laughs> nice. fun to see but it was, uh, that's awesome. no there, there was a lot of good people there and it was a it's a good time to go it was only my second time going and uh yeah you're gonna definitely keep going for sure that's awesome yeah we, we like we we're still been recovering from the convention season here in canada and like you know a lot of people a lot of the conventions are still just starting to get back on so i, I imagine next year will be even better we had like a little comic arts festival here locally and it, it's weird like it wasn't even a convention or anything it was free everything was free so we had like uh some people show up like artists michael cho Stuart, and Catherine Eminem, and uh steve mcnivan and uh was uh yeah, I'm just drawing blanks here, but uh, yeah, I mean there were there were some good artists there, so I, you know I went and I was really happy Michael Cho was attending, so I I was hoping to see Matt there, but I don't think he could make it. So I had to I went on my own like really early because <laughs> I was just wanted to get signatures for yeah, the he podcast. He was a su- super nice guy, super nice guy. Oh, yeah. I I don't know if I mentioned that. Yeah, I met I met him too down there. Yeah, yeah, I, I even talked I talked super to him. I was nice like. Guy. You're gonna be Charlie, and he was like, "Oh, okay, okay, I turn on that." Because he was asking, he was asking me like, "Why I wasn't going to Fan Expo?" And I was like, "Oh, and I was too like short notice and everything." But he was like, "Yeah, to come to you know the other conventions in Canada." And yeah, he's amazing, super nice guy. We talked for a bit, 
And yeah, like he was, I noticed that he was just, I, I emailed him, you know, before the convention and asked him if he was doing like commissions and stuff. And he said he wasn't doing commissions, but he might do some doodles, you know, for kids and stuff. So, so you know, some people were taking their shot when I was there, I took my shot and asked him to do a little rainy black doodle. And, you know, I like he wasn't charging or anything. So he did one for, and I was like very happy about that. So it was a very an awesome opportunity. And he was, yeah, he was kind enough to sign some issues for the, for the, for the giveaway so i know i know we're doing a giveaway uh for the well not a giveaway but i guess the grand prize for the radiant black trivia one of them is a radiant black number one reprint which i suggested you could give a friend uh you know to get them into radiant black and now guess what that issue is going to come signed by michael cho so there you go you don't have to do nothing just come signed by michael cho and uh yeah so so yeah, that was really cool and uh you know he got some prints there's a gorgeous cover he did for that i just thought to find the time to hang up i got a lot of art recently but uh he did a cover for detective comics 1000 which had like all the silver age batman on it and i bought that print and he signed it and I love it it's it's beautiful it's the kind of thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it has all it's like an orange cover. It has all the Batman on it, you know, like the Silver Age Batman and everything. And it's really it's a really cool cover. It's Robin in the middle as well. So, yeah, I got that. And um, yeah, then I went to Stuart M and then got like a sketchbook from him and he did a little doodle for me inside. Like I am again, these guys like weren't charging anything. I was just like taking my, my shot in the dark and I was just like, oh, could you please just like, you know, do whatever. And he was like, what do you want me to do? I was like, oh, whatever you want. And he just did like a Spider-Man. So I thought that was appropriate because or fitting because I brought my, you know, the books I bought for him to oh, sign or all Spike. Yeah, that, that cover is sweet. Just, sorry, just looking at that now, that cover is absolutely sweet. I love that. All his yeah. art is just so, it's so like, it's so simple. It's It kind of reminds me of Somni a little bit, like yep. just how simple how simple it is, but it's just just gorgeous. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it has like the Somni, like kind of also Dick Tracy vibes. I think that's why they get him to do the the the, the DC like Omni uh, covers because he has that like classic feel he draws them in that like you know classic look and aesthetic and it's just awesome so yeah Michael Cho and you know one thing he told us actually about the Masterverse I was talking to him and he was telling me about how you know and I apologize for I'm not meant to bring this up but I, I you know he didn't say any of this was like you know not sensitive information so he was happy to talk about it so he said that Kyle's been really busy the last couple of years because he's been trying really hard to make Radiant Black like a movie and um uh you know try you know try to get that going and then he said that um he actually you know i was asking him if he he told me about the story about how he got in touch with kyle to do the the cover a for number one and that he was super happy to do it because he thought the whole thing was super interesting and, and you know spinning off like power range as cause power rangers run and everything he thought this was a really cool uh, project so he was happy to do it and then i asked him if he would you know if he was uh could tell us you know podcast folks if he would be willing to do another cover in the future and he said you know actually kyle reached out to him recently to do a cover for a new masterverse title and he said he's going to do it so i mean i know it's not radiant pink and i'm just gonna say and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sorry about that sound i'm not gonna get people's hopes up too much but i'm just gonna say that when you when you if you pay attention to to the things Kyle's been saying and sometimes they are a little you know they're a little on the nose with us but if you if you pay attention to what Kyle's been saying in in you know like the during STCC during a C2E2 he also had that whatnot stream and during that stream I even asked him I was like you know that cut out the, the new character that you have behind you who is that and he said that's no one no one you have to worry about that's verbatim what he said there's also articles online with Michael Basudel replying that that's no one. And I think they're being coy with us. I think His name no, could just be no one. I think it is no one because when you look at, first of all, you look at the Massiverse website and we do have a new title that's coming out, that's coming soon. They didn't show us what it is yet, just as coming soon. There's a new space for a new title. And if you if you look at Michael Basudel's signature that he did for some people at the convention, he basically drew the symbols of all the heroes that have ongoings or the characters that have ongoings in Radiant Black. If you look at the signature, the last one looks like a zero with a one through it. It's almost like the Radiant logo, but the, the line is like, it's placed oh, a, 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 at a different angle, which looks like no one. So I That's think a it's... Good one. Also, yeah. like if you shorten, it's like number one, N-O dot one, number one, yeah. and then you have the circle slash through, it's like a zero. Or like yeah. no, I don't know. It's interesting. That's that's a really good touch. And it was spelled like N O one O E or zero N E. I'm I'm swapping numbers. I, the, 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 it's hard because they've only brought it up in speech. So oh, okay, it's, they said no one like N O 
than space o n e like no one okay but but it, we don't know yet but like i think it's safe to say that might be the character's name or an, an allusion to the character's name yeah some sort but yeah so yeah there's that to look forward to so my guess my guess going on pure mm-hmm. speculation based on what michael cho said is that he's doing a cover for the no one book that's my guess that's my guess Damn. i don't know i don't know if that's actually the case or not but yeah that's what i'm thinking my guess would be issue 25 we're getting a michael cho cover that's but he said he, he said it's not reading black he said oh he really said no reading oh yeah, shit. he said it's a he said it's a new title that's not announced yet <laughs> so it's not massive verse too either then. no no he said it's massive verse but he said it's a new title no but not like a uh, super massive too i mean no no it's not super massive okay i, I don't yeah. think at least i, I think your, your guess is a really good one then yeah yeah so so yeah i mean things to look forward to eh? like that's exciting i honestly wasn't expecting him to uh to drop anything like that but i was you know very happy where he was willing to share something like that cool Catch. Yeah, and obviously we have another big piece of news, but you know, spinning out of C2E2 and and uh, uh, SDCC, and we talked about this last time. We are getting Supermassive two or Supermassive or whatever you want to call it, all the awesome titles. But now we got confirmation at Power Morphicon that it's actually Daniele Diniculo who's going to be illustrating it, and I believe uh, Walter Baimonti is doing the colors, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean. Super massive too. That's just Daniele Dinucula. Like that, I, I people. I, I know people like Daniele Dinucula. I know we talk about that for a long time. Some secrets, all that good stuff. We all know here. Like we've been preaching that good stuff. But I think for me personally, like I think this was a big deal because I I I really like Daniele Dinucula. And, and you know we, if you go back in time in the podcast, even before Ali and Matt or Ali and Charlie joined, when it was back when it was just me and Matt, there was a conversation we had where Matt asked me and then i asked him he asked me who is the artist that you would want to do uh a rating block issue the most and i said daniele de Nicolo. Mm-hmm. and then he asked and i asked him who the artist you want to do the most he said ryan otley so right now like that was very early on that w- we're talking like almost two years ago this is a mm-hmm. this is like huge or sorry almost a year ago a year and a half ago yeah because it's like around yeah. a- april 2021 like that so yeah, like this is yeah, this is just like huge. And you know, being someone who loved Seven Secrets, like I mean, we we, <laughs> we panel to panel, they covered it. I wasn't there, I couldn't make it, but you know, I was the one who suggested the title to to the the fellow uh, my fellow co-host, and they loved it. So I just yeah, started I mean, it. Yeah, I just I it's one of those titles where I think I bought all the ratios for 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 the whole series because I loved it so much, and it's just such a good it's such a good book that I hope more people will get exposed to in, in the future because I just I just feel like it didn't get its due yet to be honest. I know I know the people who read it really like it, but I know that it, it hasn't you know, there's still more people who I feel like we're, there's still an audience that it could reach in my opinion. But yeah, I mean Daniele Dinaculo, huge news. So happy. Couldn't be happier with this news to be honest. And like Power Rangers fans, right? They're gonna be happy because it's like a whole shattered grid thing, right? There's there's history yeah. here. I love Dinaculo. We've been seeing work. him do like like a little more and more, right? Like with those cardboard cutouts, mm-hmm. and then we get yeah, like he did shift, lucky. right? Shift part one, the art. Yeah. The first oh one. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And like, he designed. Like, we've he just designed been getting shift. all all those all those little pieces, like just dropping here and there. So honestly, like hearing that, it, it just kind of like I don't know. It didn't surprise me in a way. It just it just seemed like it it just was meant to be in a way. Like yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. But no, no awesome. Yeah, super, super excited for that news. Cause Did, yeah. isn't he the co-creator awesome. of shift? I'm pretty sure he is. He's the co-creator. He, of I shift. think he was, I, I so. definitely saw him on one issue. I wasn't sure. I'm pretty I sure he just, he designed, he designed shift like aesthetic. Oh movie. shit. Eh? Wow. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Like, don't quote he, he me on that. He also did the 125 sure. for Rope Sun number one. I, I wasn't yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Did. What was was he? What was Shift one of those uh, sketches like in the hard drive that came with the Radiant Black Box? Uh, no. I mean, I remember. I remember they like. I don't know if he actually designed Shift. Now, if I if I think back to it, because Shift did appear. I I don't know. I I think he did definitely have something to do with the design aspect of Shift, or at least Shift Part One. I know he did that much. But yeah, I, I just I just love his, his artwork. To be honest, I think he has perfect like his style really suits the masterverse and especially oh, certain yeah. characters like shift in my opinion is he draw shift so well 100%. yeah yeah yes. his style it's like anime in motion like it's like the cleanest it is like manga like it's so and it's, he loves anime. i love it he yeah well, i'm anime. not saying it like drug yeah. just manga no, 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 it's I, a good you know thing. what i mean it's a good, it's a good yeah. thing because i'm oh. assuming that's what he's that's what he's going for he wants that stuff. I yeah love so it. yeah so so it's like that's a probably 
if you probably said that to him, that'd make him very happy, him being like an anime nerd and everything. So, yeah, I, I mean, just this is just huge news. I don't know, I'm just like, I'm all like spilling my words right now, but I'm just so happy. So, Danielo Dinicolo, man, looking forward to your art. Walter, everybody who's joining for Supermassive 2, we can't wait. And the last piece of news, I know we've got a lot of news here before we start the episode, I know, I know, but this one's a big one. So, you know, recently they've been teasing us with the, the Radiant Black li- uh, Helmet's going to go live soon. Uh, well, guess what? The Radiant Black Helmet did go live soon, and some of us are happy, some of us are crying. Most of us are crying, I'd say, because, <laughs> uh, because let me tell you, <laughs> it's 500 U.S. tax included, <laughs> but the, si- yeah. the shipping is 70 U.S., so it's 570 yeah. U.S. to get that helmet to yeah. you, and and that is a special, a little a special. What am I even saying? That is a special promotional launch price. They said that one month after the launch, the price is going to go up to 600 U.S. Beautiful. Beautiful. I I was thinking I was like you know, I was talking to Ali and I was like you know what if we had like 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 I fanboy like those guys shout out to those guys awesome podcast if we had like a shared space for a podcast where we all recorded i we could like yeah, justify yeah, yeah we could justify yeah, like yeah. shipping in as a team you know what i mean like 200 yeah, bucks 200 bucks each, bucks each. Yeah. yeah like it, it could do we could pull that we could swing that but like fuck man it is a lot honestly like i am and first of all i just want to say like i'm still glad this thing is just in existence right now like this early on especially just like looking at this thing yeah. like it's so well made like you can tell like you they're you made individually Kyle wearing it yeah they and they are man, so shout, shout out. yeah shout out no they, they, they're props, four to five months to get to you and then star child was this star child props yeah, yeah i'm pretty sure it's star child props yeah. and it shout yeah. out star yeah. child yeah. props yeah. yep it's, it's star child props and it takes they said what did it say it says, let me just read it to you. So it says here, helmet is made in u- urethanic resin. I'm, I'm sorry if I said that like, wrong. Yeah, no, you <laughs> literally, like, I, I've wanted to 3D print something like this so many times, but it's the way the helmet's constructed. Like, this is this whole, is the part. This is what Charlie's The whole visor is ridiculously hard to make. You have to make a whole mold and actually, like, mold it yourself and put your own resin in there to dry it, right? And fucking, like, actually craft the visor yeah. from scratch, which would yeah. be fucking just stu- out of my capabilities. So, no, uh, once once uh, this property, uh, fingers crossed, gets even more and more popular and more and more of these things get made, um, the price will go more and more down. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That will be that will be the time where I'll I'll scoop up one of those. But no, um, just 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 awesome. These things are are out there to yeah. buy. It's yeah. a luxury item right now. Like for me, I might just buy one, and then that's my money for days this year. I could just invite the girl over. Like, Look, I have a radiant black helmet. Like, cool. Yes. Don't expect yeah. anything more of me. Don't expect yeah. anything for Christmas. No, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it looks legit. It's yeah. for early adopters, for fans that might have the disposable income, and I'm sure one day there'll be cheaper versions. I'm, I'd bet money on it. And I think you know it's great that this is available. Kyle didn't have to do this. It's like a year and a half away, and they made freaking helmets that are super cool. Yeah. So you know. No, this is this is incredible, and and honestly, I I don't I like I I am like you know like what's the word like yeah of course the price is high but i'm not surprised or anything it's a luxury item it's a very well made luxury yeah, item and sure. it's not yeah and it's a custom made item it's, it's it's in the sense that like it says here wearable with led system for the eyes smocked visor is clear 100 percent of visibility the helmet is locked using internal magnets the helmet is handmade it's fucking wearable, okay? And Elon Musk handmade. has a brain chip that you can put in your brain so when you throw up, it opens <laughs> up. It's fantastic. Oh, custom custom painting available? I think it means painting. Okay. Painting, yeah. 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 Or oh, red or whatever. So you get red or yeah. Oh, oh baby. If we yeah. could do a Wendell one with the with the yeah. single visor with the cyclops side. That was, yeah. Oh, that would be really oh, cool. Oh, baby. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. This is, in my opinion, the price is pretty solid, 500 I think 600 is is like is like... You know, I don't think they should go higher than that. But like, I'm again, I'm I don't know shit about this. I didn't make it, so I, I really can't. I'm just talking purely that conjecture. But I I, I just think because like 670 with the shipping, that's a lot. That's like a PS5. So it's like at that point, it is like it's only people you know who yeah. have that kind of budget. But they it's like bike it's helmets like, for motorbikes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Those would be like half the cost, and I could see a lot of people buying those because they're actually you know they could use them outside of just Practical. like. Yeah, more practically, yeah, exactly. But this one, this one I like a lot because obviously it's beautiful. It looks exquisitely made. Shout out again to Sideshot Props, amazing. I think 500 bucks is a fair cost. Honestly, tax included, it's pretty generous. 
seventy dollars shipping. It is a huge item, and it's I think it's coming from like Europe. So yeah, I mean it makes sense. They're fragile. Yeah, okay. very fragile. Yeah, they're gonna need to pack the fuck out of that. So I mean, if it comes, does it come with the with the stand, the helmet stand? Because that would be that would be oh, perfect. That would be sweet. The base. Sweet. Yeah. Cause, cause that would be. I'm, I, I'm, I'm assuming it does, but I really don't know. But if it does, that would be perfect. Cause like, then you could just hang it up on the base, like they do at the conventions. Uh, I I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm eventually gonna get one for sure. But I, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know when I'm gonna get one. Like probably sometime in the next year, because it does take four to five months to ship and and to make and ship, and then also like <laughs> it's expensive as fuck. So, would you? We'll, we'll all eventually get one. I'm sure. Eventually. <laughs> eventually. Eventually. You know, lady, eventually. So, uh, yeah, but uh, no, if it makes anybody feel better, people that are here, my fellow pod mates and people that are listening, if it makes you feel any better, not many people bought this the day it came out because it was very expensive. Like, I think like at least on the Discord, I think like three or four people bought it and like one of them or two of them were like lawyers. <laughs> so, so if it makes you feel better, you know, and yeah. I know Se- and can, Septic. Congrats Septic. to you, God. Like, that's yeah. the Shout out to Septic. Septic smart, smart as fuck. They've been saving since the they missed out on the on the fucking uh, infernal glow red kickstarter helmet so shout out to them you just got the helmet man congrats there you go yeah, sure. it's not just rich people it's just people that have like an extra fund yeah. or whatever in yeah. case the, for the next awesome thing that i have to get just break in case of awesomeness people, people who are yeah. smart who are who, yeah who, yeah who are smart saved up for this but it was also tough because we had no idea the, the the talks before this release was like 400 bucks was what we were thinking 400 bucks plus shipping but, you know, obviously it's a little bit higher, but you know what? Like I said, I think it's worth it. I can't wait to get my hands on one. And I want to say big, 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 big congratulations to the people that already got one. Make sure you guys to tag us, tag all the rain and black you know, people, the people, the creators, everything. When you get the helmet, let us know how badass it is. So, yeah. Yeah, show them off for sure. I want to see them in like weird places. I want to, you know, someone's going to get the Hawaiian <laughs> shirt going with the helmet. Yeah, oh, like, yeah I was just about to say, you, you got to do, no, nah, yeah. It, it, it made me think I, I was downtown Toronto um, dur- during Fan Expo and there was actually there was this guy like a couple blocks away from the convention, this um, Spider-Man dude. And he was like he climbed on this big pillar that was probably like eight, ten feet tall. And and he was all on there just quipping at people and at people who had come over at him. And he had he had this little hat on the ground. He was getting pictures with people. And if you got a picture, you would have to like throw a little tip in the hat. But the That's hat busking. was literally That's awesome. like overflowing but you fucking you throw your radiant helmet on fucking hop on top of a pillar and you're, you're just laughing <laughs> that's yeah. awesome there you go it, it might be a little too late for this year's halloween i don't know if they'll get it in time by <laughs> october but next year get those hawaiian shirts and yeah there you go you have your costume ready yeah. oh yeah i mean at least you save yourself uh some money in that respect with the hawaiian shirt because <laughs> most of your budget was just the helmet so yeah anyways I think that's everything in terms of news right now. So, yeah, there you go. We got everybody caught up on the current Radiant Black news. Um, obviously, check out our last episode where we talked about the brunt of everything that came out from the SDCC because there were more announcements like Radiant Pink and, and you know, certain people working on certain books, things like that. So check that out. Now, let's talk about uh, Radiant Black number 17, which was another great issue and an issue that we, we were all looking forward to for a while because... You know, the last issue was pretty intense. We had the first assembly of the Fab Five or the Radiant Rogues or whatever you want to call them. I like Radiant Rogues, but Fab Five's good too. And uh, yeah, let's, let's go over the, the, the credits here before we get started. So again, we've got the title of this book is Return. And uh, <laughs> for reasons, as you see in the last page of last issue, because we've had a tease that Nathan is indeed returning as Radiant Black. And that's huge. People are... They're, everyone's freaking out, and I don't blame them because you know, we, we were all freaking out. <laughs> it's a pretty big deal. And uh, yeah, this uh, is a, an issue written by Kyle Higgins and Joe Clark. And I just want to say a big, big, big congratulations to Joe Clark for just giving birth to his uh, his child, a new child. And congratulations to them and for their, 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 their family. So yeah, that's awesome. Art by the incredible, just the legendary Marcelo Costa, who we all we just love here. And Letters by the amazing Becca Carey, who you just saw today, Masterverse tagged her in uh, in some sort of thread where people were like, "Oh, who's your favorite letter?" And he's like, "You know, Becca Carey. Is, Becca Carey's pretty amazing, and she was pretty happy." So shout out, shout out. Nice to see letters getting some love. They are the unsung. Heroes. If I was her, my Twitter handle would be at BC Comics, but uh, I don't do anything. But yeah, yeah, Becca's the best. She's, if I'm being honest, 
she's the letter like I know the most. Like I know like Russ uh, Wuton and stuff like that, but Becca is my favorite uh, uh, letter for sure. She's she's doing new champion of Shazam, and I I I I was very happy to see that she was part of that creative team. And just it just it, I knew, and we talked about this a year ago, all of us. We you know even Michael told us he's like we're gonna see Becca in a lot more books in the future because I think she's just amazing, and it's just so nice to start seeing her in the big two books and yeah. books that we we personally love. So yeah. We've got cover A by Marcelo Costa, very beautiful cover with radiant black and radiant yellow, and just just awesome stuff from Costa. Typical Costa, and this series continues to be one of the most consistent series in terms of uh, covers, in terms of just quality overall. An awesome cover B, focused on radiant yellow with Diego Craco. Lot, lots of uh, it's just a lot, a lot of time. It's a nice time like aesthetic. Yeah, one. and then uh, cover C by Luna Prisiashnuk and Marcelo Costa. A really, really gorgeous cover, almost like a museum style, like portrait. <laughs> you just got like, you know, uh, radiant black in the background. And yeah, I know, I know my, our friend Marty, a friend of the podcast and moderator of the pod, he, he loved that cover and he was looking for it. So I hope you found one. Anyway, let's dive in. Uh, is this Triona Farrell's first time doing good colors? Oh, I forgot. did I not mention the colors? My apologies. So no, this is actually the second issue in a row that Triona Farrell is okay. doing the colors. Yeah. So we've actually... Okay. We, we we actually talked about this and thank you for bringing that up. Uh, yeah, so Igor Monti originally was solicited as the colorist for these issues. Like if you look back to the solicit, but that didn't turn out to be the case, and that's because obviously, unfortunately, we had the whole situation with Erica Dorso where she had an injury with her hand and was unable to work on in front of Go Red, so that caused the delay in the Massiverse machine. Fortunately, we've got an amazing Mr. Massiverse at the helm who's in control. And, you know, everything was sorted. Unfortunately, that means they had to get another colorist for these issues because Igor's schedule also got pushed and he's still coloring pages for IGR. The good news is that Igor is just giving, he's, he's just, you know, giving us teases of his incredible work, saying that there's a lot of amazing surprises to look forward to. And, you know, you know how we feel about Igor Monte on this podcast. Like, we love him. So, yeah. yeah. I like the colors in this. I think the lighting was really good, and I really like the the richness of like the oranges and stuff, like in Nathan's hair. And now I'm kind of realizing Nathan is basically Philip J. Fry in design, <laughs> almost from Futurama. But I love it. Oh, yeah, this, this issue was great. It was very like more Wendell is always a good thing, and you can see why Wendell would be a little pissy about dealing with not just kids, but so many different futures in your way, and just you know like dealing with time, like loss, and seeing different circumstances all the time. Like you can see that Doctor Strange is just as uh, you know just as irritable, seeing seeing like what one million futures and stuff like that. So I, I think that's a really cool element to Wendell's character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that this is our biggest look on him so so far for sure. And uh, I can't can all wait for it for that for that next issue for, first off, but not to get too far far ahead of ourselves. Yeah, it's going to be a hell of a time. Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> but, uh, this this like j- just right from the start I just love like how and he's always like this, like how sure he is and how like you always know he knows more. But he's uh, he's always kind of like the watcher, like the specter, like he like he he has more power than but he's kind of just like a, a witness sometimes in a way where he's like he can't say too much things or he's going to screw up yeah. the timeline or and we, we don't really know how his powers go yet. But it's it's, it's going to be really intriguing to see. But no, it's got some really cool dynamics first off and some some really cool fight scenes later and some uh those colors colors really stand out later on uh just mentioning the colors there but yeah yeah loved it overall i love how how calm he is throughout everything like even if we go back to issue seven like he's the most calming voice out of the four of them and now here he like he's super like i, I don't want to say one no but like it because you know he knows he knows what's going to happen he knows what he needs to do to make it happen and even though Nathan is like super confused and doesn't know what the hell's going on, but Wendell just keeps it all going and calm and collected. I love that about him. And I love how it contrasts with how the book ends, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Yeah. And also what's confirmed this issue is uh, that Nathan rolls joints that are so tight they keep burning for a whole month because that's where we see him because he's still smoking the same joint from last <laughs> yes. issue. And, and I love that. Like he was just. Is it the same? What? Yeah. Because this is after Marshall. Yeah. Because. Yeah. 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 This is like. Because that, that's. Not, yeah, that's why he, like Wendell is like all oh, early because Marshall he, rolled him in. And kids, one. if you smoke weed, there's a 50 50 chance you'll die. That's what happened to Marshall. So do not <laughs> smoke marijuana. I swear. Yes. No, I'm serious. I if anyone in the Discord tell me they try for the first time, I will give you a lecture. Maybe. But but and one thing that's uh, one thing that's uh, that's interesting in this issue actually is that you know Wendell is 
and I, I noticed this later, and we'll talk about this more later. I don't want to get into it too much later, but I think it's such a like interesting dynamic that he can't fly. <laughs> like it, it's kind of a big like it's kind of a big yeah. deal. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, like, honestly, I always forget. I I just always forget that. Because they yeah, all look no, like it, it's flies. it's. You know I mean? Yeah, no, it's he, it is interesting. He needs the future where he saw his, he got his pilot's license. <laughs> I can fly around. It's, it's, it's just pretty funny, yeah. and we'll we'll talk about like later towards the end why it's pretty funny because it, it is pretty funny that he can't fly. But keep that in mind because I I tend to forget that, and I'm glad I'm not the only one. I'm oh, glad that you guys. Yeah, him I, driving I, up I in always, the car. Is, yeah, uh, is, he can't fly, bro. Like he, he the only time drive, they're ever bro. flying is when, and this is very like, it's very. They do pay attention to this detail. They do this like the, them who make the books, the creators. They, they only fly when Radiant Black's with them, and he's using his blue energy specifically to move them. Yeah. Like it, it's it's very yeah. well conveyed, but they can't actually fly. Like I Tell mean, me. I guess Pink can kind of the, the, move Pink around the closest teleporting. Thing. Yeah, Pink is the Yeah. Pink but red, red, like red is. I guess she has like aerial access because she could morph into things that give her some sort of boost. She could propel herself, right? She can morph like, like Hulk yeah. jumps. But, but this guy can't do Hulk. shit, bro. This guy can't do shit. Like he, he's literally grounded. Like he can't do anything. On, like, on, at least, at least not, not that we've seen yet. Not that we. I don't want to. I don't want to like talk on my ass right now. But like, I, based on the power set we've seen in 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 previous issues and what we've seen him do in this issue it doesn't seem like he has an aerial advantage or ability give him a light board give him like a board of light like silver surfer (laughs) static that would be so lit that 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 would be dude that would be awesome if it was like static like he actually conjured like little light oh dude that would be yeah that would be so oh my god the figures i'd buy i screw helmets i'd be buying like Wendell figs also at the bottom of that page where uh, where wendell shows up you don't do this alone hop in is the most fast and furious moment of the entire series up to this point like come on (laughs) come on yeah you just didn't call him family yeah no 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 no, 100 percent. that was a good catch that's a good yeah. catch. Even like the, the angle, the angle shot and everything just looks like a fast scene. I know that's that's a good catch. But yeah, here, like we start picking it up right from the last issue, like the guy said. Um, he, Wendell shows up to uh, to Nathan as we've, you know, we got a peek into this last issue. But as we notice here, Nathan actually hasn't uh, been contacted by the robot yet. So 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 Wendell's early, and uh, yeah, so the, the, we see the whole thing take place. The and it's it's really funny because. You see in the moment, like you guys said, it shows how composed Wendell is because it's it is really weird. Like from both perspectives, and we kind of see that. I think Wendell knows that him being who he is and him just being a, seeming like a level-headed person, but also Nathan just being Nathan in this whole radiant situation. Nathan's looking at him kind of like, what the fuck is going on? Like, why is this like weird I, person right here? I I, I yeah I I actually just noticed now him saying that. Um, call me wendell why wouldn't he say my name is wendell like mm-hmm. why like you know what i mean well, like nathan doesn't even know wendell right this is the first thing i don't know you meet. yeah i know but like yeah. oh you can yeah. call me this like why would he call you this like it's a nickname or something like you know what i mean like hey that uh, my I name think he wendell. said he said i'm the yellow one so i think that's why i think yeah, i think call yeah. me wendell like yeah. i call me charlie like it's mm-hmm. kind of I don't know. Maybe he changed his name. I'm throwing that out I think he's just quick and cutting to the chase and trying yeah. to tell me. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think, I th- I think he's trying. I, I think why. he's trying to remain composed and trying to give Nathan the most important information ASAP to try to get the fuck out of there quickly and save Marshall. Maybe personally, I've just yeah. never said that. Maybe, maybe, no, no, no. no, yeah. no. It, it's also like, I think, and, and, and maybe I'm the only person getting this vibe, but I definitely get the vibe that, and I think... I think Kyle does a good job of kind of showing there is a generational divide between each character yeah. that's really yeah, sure, Like you, sure. you feel Wendell talks and acts very differently than Marshall, who talks and acts very differently than Dylan, who talks. You know what I mean? Like, like they, work. The, he's working at a yeah. big box store and stuff like that, like a dying yeah. kind of thing or like a different generation. Even even the preview pages from 18, where like he's in the in, in the plant or whatever he's working in, and then he's talking to the his his family at home and like, the different eras. Like you, you get the feeling that he's kind of more old fashioned. You know what I mean? Like he's I don't know. It, it, it just seems like he's a different kind of person than Marshall and those people. So I get I get I guess maybe that's part of his old fashioned. But yeah, he's composed. He's trying very hard to just give him the important bits of information fast, and it's a good it's a good job from him because Nathan's obviously freaked out. But I like that he leads with "I'm the yellow one" because that already yeah. gives them common ground, and he could you know you could just see he's the yellow one. So what's interesting to me is like what does being a superhero look like for Wendell? Is it shooting beams of light and stopping stuff, <laughs> or is it like stopping time and like handing people hammers and stuff like that? Like the way yeah. he solves crime, this issue completely changed the way I look at Wendell's crime solving proclivities. Yeah, it, it kind of makes me feel like. 
he's it made me think at first like he's kind of useless in a fight like he's he's must not be very powerful like, compared to the others of course not like just generally mm-hmm. speaking like compared to radiant black who's like pretty fucking overpowered like could go into dark mode but then i was like you know what like we really don't know much about this character we haven't seen his version of cape mode or whatever we saw with satomi and radiant red it took until radiant red for her to get some developments in her powers or at least for us to see it and we saw that she could do a lot right she could absorb lava and like re relaunch it at people she could reshoot at people she could uh change her armor when she absorbed the mur- mercury right the color change and her abilities change so like there's a lot that satomi could do and then we also found out she has her own robot so like i'm not gonna get too far ahead of myself when it comes to uh wendell i feel like there is more he could probably do and i feel like we're gonna get teases of that in radiant black 18 and we're gonna see not teases we're gonna see more of that in 18 and as as someone in the discord pointed out and as we pointed out before in the preview pages that they showed for 18 you can see him talking to like a robot and it looks like a yellow robot so it looks like he might also have a robot i, I think it's safe to assume now that all each each radiant has their own robot yeah I think and, it, probably, correct me if I'm wrong too. The most we've seen Wendell, like the extent of Wendell's powers, was when he was just shooting lasers at um, 001. He did, right? he did, he did do the time thing one time, but 001 like EMP'd Splitting him. Off. Yeah. At this point, it's weird to see a radiant that doesn't have a robot. Maybe one was killed in the war or something like that, and that could be a good way to con- to convey that later on. I think that'd be cool. It's like oh, I killed my robot. Like, what does that mean? Bro, if they all have robots, I feel like the robots can definitely like mixed together you know what i mean like power ranger well, he yeah. wendell clearly knows that there is like he knows of the robots when satomi saw her robot yeah in yeah, yeah, yeah she didn't know yeah. that the robots existed right she was taken like yeah. off guard by it but wendell yeah. knows that they're yeah, there and, like, they can talk to them yeah yeah, yeah he's like you welcome you to existence yeah so it, it's so weird like for me that one was weird because either either like wendell must have gone through the exact same thing himself where he was welcomed into existence which is obviously a believable and plausible thought or he saw marshall being welcomed into existence which is more scary mm. because that's yeah. like how could how could you see what people are going through do you know what i mean he didn't even know marshall you can at see that their time. perspectives jesus yeah but he didn't even know him at that time so that's crazy like how could mm. you even see some how could you see an experience that that's crazy like, that's impressive like that's that, that makes yeah. it a little bit more powerful, if that's the case. If that makes me question. When when he sees the future, does he only see events that he's directly involved in, or does he see general things? Because if like like you were saying, if he could see someone else's perspective, that's that's a whole other like level yeah. to his uh, future seeing powers. That yeah. and his Marshall talk says, to him. He says, he says I just you. see. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say like Marshall saw the future too in uh, in uh, Supermassive. So Supermassive. did. Uh, yeah. And yeah, and yeah. so did everybody else, right? So there could be something that was, to talk yeah, about that. From the energy explosion, I don't even know how that happened. I'm I'm still That's curious still about how that happened, to be honest, because like I don't understand how the ability for them to be able to to see that future happened. Yeah. Like, I remember there was like an energy explosion and everything, but I just don't understand what happened. But here he says, he's okay. So so Nathan, when when they get into the car and they're driving, he says, "So you know the future?" And then when the response, we all do a little. The ice caps are melting. Christmas comes once a year. Out of every two marriages, uh, one out of every two marriages ends in divorce. It's patterns of probability. I just see my potential results and paths clear, like memory but backwards, kind of like rememory basically. Which uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> which so it's uh, probably it's probably his own futures then. I I, I just want to say. It's funny that he, I think someone says it's like Rememory, and then it's funny that there's a movie called Rememories in, in this universe. I, I just think that's funny. I, I, yeah. So, do you think that, we'll keep going. No, no, what were you saying? Well, do you think, like, these Radiants, they chose, chose people based on their abilities, like Red, like, Satomi's used to putting up with a lot and putting up a lot of bullshit, so she has, like, absorption power, so she's used to absorbing a bunch of stuff, and she can finally let loose. Um. Uh, with uh, Wendell, maybe they see that he's like a wise guy and is the one who would be ideal to see the future and he would be able to handle that ability and be the best. To, yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up because I actually think so far it's been very ambiguous as to how each person got their radiant. Because mm. when it came to Marshall and Nathan, it didn't come to them per se. They encountered it as they left the bar and it was literally anyone's radiant at that point. It just became yep. who grabbed it first, right? When it comes to uh, Eva, she didn't actually find it at all. Wendell decided to gift it to her. So that was to me that, to me, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say with that and with Satomi, we just saw an explosion in the sky. So it's very difficult to tell whether it was like a manifest destiny sort of situation or whether it literally just landed in front of this chick who happened to encounter it. So 
I think personally it's interesting because so far Wendell is the only person who's assigned like directly the destiny of a of a radiant where he gave someone a radiant of his own will. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, and maybe he yeah. saw a future that she was the one that needed to get it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and we don't even know how he got his radiant and I asked well, he I, I remember he said like he he just saw him he saw himself giving it to her and so he just knew he had to give it to her. So I don't I like yeah. I'm curious just like how aware and even here, like he doesn't seem very aware. Just I, I don't know, like if it's like Dr. Manhattan, like he's just experiencing all these things at the same time. He's not really just aware of what's actually I, I think he knows the most present going I think, on. I think uh, of what the fuck is going on. I think he knows more than everyone by far, just because it seems like in the timeline he got his radiant before everybody else. But Michael said, Michael said, when I asked him this in the discord, he said that everybody saw this. He said that. He said he did. He said you'll know for sure soon. But he said even if Radiant Yellow did, I think he said something like even if Radiant Yellow did get his Radiant before Marshall, it was all very close in the timeline. Like it wasn't like a yeah. huge gap or anything. He's like it was all around the same day because he was like they all get their Radiants around the same day. He said something like that. And so, so yeah. So I really want to see. I, I, I. But like I, I don't remember if that's exactly what he said. He said something like that. So I really want to see how much before everybody else did Wendell get his Radiant. And how much information does he know? Because if he is actually the first person to get a Radiant on Earth that we know of, that we know of, of the four main characters, then I think there's a lot more story, even even Radiant Black related, like directly as tied to all their destinies and fates. Yeah. But like, and we'll, we'll probably well, see it, that in 18, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 what, what, honestly. Like, I why just, is he I, racing? I, yeah, what's the it's weird. racing? I, I did. I did just have this thought. Like may, maybe the radiant can actually like travel through time, but the radiant actually goes into that version of like whatever timeline it goes into. That version of Wendell, it, or Wendell, it has those memories of Wendell. So maybe like mm-hmm. he loses memories, like it when it goes to the past, like he has those memories. He doesn't know anything from the future. So what if you can? Mind. But no, I, I just cannot wait to see this origin. Like it's yeah, no. Do you guys think you can time loop too, like Death Day or something like that, where he can die and then go back and relive the day and fix it? Dude, I, I bet I that's a possibility. Know, I, I, think, I think they've been deliberately cautious with his powers. I think I the really, robots. I, really, I think in existence they could show him. They they may have the ability to show him that. But him actually dying might fuck with it. But I don't know. That that's a good question. Uh, it's all so it's all so like intriguing. Like he's so, he's definitely the most mysterious one. Like everyone's yes. kind of like okay, she's strong. She's she he can do black holes. Like he can do like pink can do portals. Like portals are kind of cool. But no, the yeah. window. He, is just he has like, he has to be strong if he's like grounded. That's what I'm thinking. Like they yeah. they have to give him some sort of really overpowered like powers because like. He can't, it, when you look at it as a power scale thing, like, it seems like each Radiant is capable, each Radiant is pretty strong, and they've not, there's no, there hasn't been an illusion in the story to where one Radiant is superior to the other. It seems like they're all pretty powerful, and they all they give also, you unique They all serve a purpose. Exactly. One, and one thing I yeah. just want to mention, yeah. we were talking about Origins getting the Orb, uh, getting the Orb, getting the Radiant. What I think is interesting is, the, when we see uh, Nathan grab the uh, grab the radiant, they were both there together. They they wouldn't have found the the radiant without each other. Marshall and Nathan, they're both out there drinking. Yep. If he didn't come back home, and then yep. if you're out with the boys, like I wouldn't if I see something like a meteor crash or something, I'm not gonna go by myself. If I'm out with someone <laughs> else, it's like karaoke. I'm not going by myself. But if I'm with someone oh. else, yeah. So those two wouldn't have got the radiant without each other. They needed the radiant. They both needed each other, and they both kind of need the radiant the way they're sharing it. And I think it's it's genius what they're doing with this book. When I talk radiant black, who the fuck am I talking about? Am I talking about Nathan? People think that when they first when they read the first four issues, but I think it's a it's a lot about the two of them, and also just obviously uh, Eva and everyone else. But I really I love the dynamic here, and I I can't wait. Like I know they're probably gonna fight each other. There's gonna be some uh, bumpy roads ahead, but like God damn, I love this dynamic. Yeah, and I don't want to spend too much time here, but we're gonna move on. But I just want to say that was amazing. And before we do uh, this, I think next issue 18 will give us a lot of answers about about Yellow because. It's 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 we're getting to that point of the story. And if you look at the next arc, it's like what an alien artifact like or an alien item, whatever crash lands on Earth. So it's going to be I think we're going to get some answers in the next issue. Anyway, my, yeah, my, was, my wild guess is that alien artifact has to do with the with the character that was revealed at C2E2. That's what I'm right. talking about with the circle. Yeah, yeah, no, guess. Yeah, that would be that would be really cool. 
So, yeah, we see that Marshall came prepared because he has some random household items. And we're not going to talk about why he has them right just yet. But he does have a whoopee cushion and he has a fart cushion or whatever. He has a hammer. He has a sugar. He has some sugar. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, he actually has those things. In the next page, you get a, a gorgeous page. One of my favorite pages in this entire issue, one they teased before it even came out. Just a gorgeous page of... It's it's sweet, right? As as a reader, you've been looking to forward to this moment kind of for a long time, in in a good context, hopefully, in a positive one, you know, like Marshall dying or anything. But which is ironically kind of the case here. But um, yeah, we see Nathan finally equipping the Radiant, and it's just such a beautiful page. Everything down from the colors yes. to the artwork. Yeah, just yeah, no, yeah. there's no even text on this page. You don't need any text, right? This is just full appreciate artwork page got the radiant text I, 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 i'm curious that it does say he's, he's flying now. away and wendell's just like that watching is, him like wendell's just like yeah he's giving him like oh, go I'm save the day the radiant black yeah. parents sending your kid day. off to school for the first day and all your worries what is <laughs> <it>? <laughs> basically and he does um, his doctor strange like thing as afterwards to see the the probabilities and then he gets into yeah. the car and moves it forward <laughs> which i love drives, such a, drives I up so confused when i saw that the first time it's oh. such a charming it's such i knew exactly what he was doing here because i i because you know he obviously wouldn't have done the thing yeah. and then done it without like seeing something so i thought that was such a charming like little scene that was just so funny and uh, Nathan yeah. in the car uh, with Wendell. Wait, is this the first time we see someone in the real world weather trap in existence? Like, I mean, Nathan was in the coma and stuff like that, but with his eyes open, is this the first time we see someone like conscious while they're in the yes. uh, existence? Yes, that's cool. Yeah, I think Theta pointed that out as well. Yeah, that's the first time we see someone, and it's just like it seems like communicating in existence, but they're you know from their eyes, they're not there. But you know, yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and the panel of like to be radiant black again is as Nathan's looking up. Like I love that panel so freaking much. Yeah. It's like he just got the breakup, and like he his friend might be dead, but hey, I got superpowers tonight. No, no, but it is it's your mixed emotions. Like it's like your buddy's in trouble, but it's like I came back from death. I mean, death isn't death anymore with when you're sharing a radiant, and uh, just like he has hope. I love that whole thing of like you need that when times are tough, and he's also trying. Sometimes when it's hard to fix your own life, you just want to fix problems, and he sees that his buddy has you know he thinks he's mishandled the situation. And he's got a bunch of uh villains coming for him so i just kind of like this like optimism on nathan's end and obviously that splash page is freaking amazing of him powering up again like oh it's all my pages all the pages are my favorite i could have like my whole like house just like covered in pages of the whole series like god damn totally he's ready, he's ready to go ready to go i know i love that page wendell just drives up five feet but then then we go in and we i i love like how just we kind of start directly off like how how we were last issue then there's been a slight change of plans that line from last issue right yeah and then but i love i love that last panel on that page where he's like there's narrating he's like so what if he's not alone and you know we're gonna flash back back to them talking about the plan but you see mecca like slowly coming out of the water like fucking killer croc and <laughs> batman you know what i mean like, like some jaws <laughs> shit right there you know what i mean it's so scary dude yeah. mecca's terrifying dude. Like, it's mecca's essential crazy. it's awesome yeah, no, yeah, Sentinel, exactly. That's another good one. And it just, it's just terrifying. And I love, I love, I just want to say, I don't know, I don't know, like Triana and Marcelo, beautiful collaboration on the pages where they're doing flashback because that green, like green hues to uh, to show us the flashback to convey like that it's a, you know, back in time effect. Super, super awesome. Love that little touch. And uh, yeah, so we see that these fucking, these idiots actually planned ahead and the, uh, and you know yeah. their last their last encounter left them uh, <laughs> in a situation in a, in a I guess left them in a place where they wanted to approach the next one with more strategy and coordination. So we see here that they had a backup plan and and uh, you know Jace Jace's death has clearly affected Riley and there's there's so he says we need a contingency plan and now we see that guy yells Foxtrot go so uh, Mecca. Mecca has his big moment, amazing page. He just charges, says it's Mecca, <laughs> fucking knocks Radiant Black through a few uh, stories of the building. And guess where Radiant Black lands? <laughs> Outside on Wendell's car. So I guess, uh, as Wendell said, he could only see some flat paths, and it's not always clear because him moving his car didn't matter because Ready Black still landed on it and destroyed it. Or maybe he saved his ass. No, but maybe he, he the did that to save him. I think he mentions uh, that later too. He was like, if oh, if the car wasn't there, you wouldn't have had enough time to 
to react to him coming at you, something like that. We'll true. We'll get to it eventually. But yeah, that was definitely on purpose, probably. Yeah. From when oh, okay. okay. <laughs> not only funny. do we not know what this book is, but also now we have timey wimeyness on top of this, so it's really hard <laughs> to speculate. We may as well yeah. be, you know, it's tough, and the time travel stuff does get mind nummy. But yeah, yeah, I didn't even really notice until talking about it right now. But that's what he did. Yeah. What's what's the ability in, in multiverses when the guy raises the platform? That's what fucking Ray and Black did in the next page. He just oh, like, like raises the, the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just raised yeah. the platform and Rick, he's like knocking him out of the map, you know what I mean? He's like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Morty and can do just, time loops too. He can do like he can retrace his steps. He can like make yeah. a trail and then return back. Morty is stuff. Wendell. Morty, yeah. <laughs> Morty is basically what, what color is his shirt? Yellow. Yellow. You got yeah. it, man. Got it. So you get one of my favorite panels in this page and this issue. <laughs> you get Excel and Sheer, the 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 the, the, the two the dream duo you didn't even know you need. Honestly, I wouldn't even mind reading like a, a spinoff comic with these two guys like at the at the help. They're just such a funny like uh, group, but uh, just the two of them especially. So he says, here comes hashtag the five baby, and they're both riding unicycles like the douches they are, and. Um, yeah, it just, it's just so funny. In the next page, we're back with Marshall. We see that Doppler has had a slight change of heart. Uh, she's escorted him out of the crime scene before the police have arrived, and she's kind of comforting him while he's, you know, getting the shit. You know, he's 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 in pretty bad shape right now. She says, save your energy. Real quick, real quick, I love how she uses the the siren sounds to kind of cushion him when uh, when she's laying him down. Yeah. That's a pretty cool use of her powers. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. I, I love, I just want to say, I love the lettering from Becca here, how she uses the woo, like she moves it behind. It, like, that, that's just fucking cool. That's that's amazing. That's an amazing use of uh, of letters right there, an amazing way to convey that, that motion. So awesome. Uh, you know, he, we get we get a little bit more of a peek into Marshall's, like, uh, I guess his, his, his morals now. We see that, you know, while he might not be as heroic as some people say Radiant Black should be, he says something that I think is is pretty admirable. He says, "Look, you asked what I stand for. I honestly have no idea what the hell is the point of uh, what the hell is the point of standing for shit if you can't help the people you care about the most." So he clearly he's even though he has he's nearly beaten to an inch of his you know he's been near to an inch of his life and he's bleeding out. He still has Nathan on his mind, and that's uh, that's admirable. And I'm shipping these two. Doppler and, and Marshall, I think they'd be a great couple. Like they <laughs> yeah. both are very similar. Like she stands up for her own way. They both do things their own way, no matter who Dude, they're that, around. I, I would, I would want that just because I when like Nick Shift want to kill Marshall even more. Like I, I would love that. This is like, <laughs> I, I would, I would, like that toxic. Like that Shift is toxic. I could totally yeah. see him like getting jealous over that. It, you know it, it's I mean? Shift versus Shift. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. These two versus yeah. Shift. No, I like it. I like it. It'll be, it'll be Doppler and Marshall versus Satomi and Shift. Oh, that's a oh, fight. Damn. Okay. damn. Next Damn. animated short, let's go. <laughs> no. yeah. Damn, that would be insane. But uh, yeah, yeah this this beautiful. this next page just reminded me of like Sister yeah. Six, right? That's yes, what it reminds yes, me. Of. Sinister yes, Sister Six, yes, <laughs> like yes. Sister Six kind of page. Just so like everyone's spread out, just like kind of displayed. You can see them nice and pretty, all their all their awesome costumes and shit. But no, it's just. It's just awesome to see them all, all, all fighting together, and it, it just shows like Nathan. Nathan still, he's he was a little bit rusty at first, but no, he's he uh, he's just back. It's like uh, riding a bike, I guess. I guess they say he's just right back on it, and no, got the rust off real quick, and absolutely blowing these guys out. And it's a, it's a it's a really cool fight too, and and it actually shows like he's. I don't know if like the radiant takes more control of him doing the powers or like if him or Marshall would be a more powerful radiant black. I'm curious to that, that kind of thing. Interesting. I like that. That, that stuff um, kind of just brings it into this issue. Plus don't forget he was what the last, he was literally just saying like 15 minutes before Marshall went and died. He's saying like, I used to run, I used to fly. And now he, he gets that back. He's not even come yeah. down for his high yet. And he's going, it's a new kind of high feeling like, you know, he couldn't yeah. walk. He literally like this guy almost died and you're yeah. going through rehabilitation and then you get dumped. Well, not dumped, but it's like, it's in a break and your love life is in limbo. And now you have agency, you have this ability to, you know, get some stress out and actually do some good in a, like a, like a way that can be, easily documented but like i helped today i saved some lives i saved the rec center or whatever the basketball yeah, yeah, yeah. there you go and, and and it's 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 really nice to see like even in the in more brief in moments that are i think significant somewhat that might get overlooked there's a moment where 
uh, right after Sheer, or sorry, Excel says this creepy line, and <laughs> even Nathan's a bit scared about how creepy it is. Uh, Shift says, nah, that won't last forever. Not one killing you becomes my new hobby. Your partner was stupid to turn down the offer. Be smarter. And then he replies, offer. And then he said, oh, it could have been pretty clean. Uh, fame, clout, enough money to make whatever content he wanted. Then he says, wait, you're the YouTube guy? And he says, digital influencer. Uh, I love Kyle's little jab right there. So that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I think was... he, he had more respect for Marshall just in that little moment. When he realized, like, oh, okay, Marshall, like, like was contacted he has a code he's got a yeah he, he has a code yeah he he maybe i think in that moment nathan realizes maybe he was a little bit harsher on marshall than he should have been because like he was accusing him of being you know like oh, opportunistic and all those things or more opportunistic than he actually is and, in this and case, they didn't talk so. it through they didn't get enough yeah. time to talk it through when he was dating jj yeah. there was we've built up that they haven't been communicating as much and like marshall's gone but he's like he's a little lonely and nathan was the only one to talk to about it so yeah Exactly. And it's interesting because, you know, he was criticizing Marshall for the way he handled the Excel situation and everything. And now he sees that, like, oh, these guys were more than just, like, attacking that kind of stuff. They had, like, ulterior motives. They're clearly up to no good. And it, it, I think it is an interesting little development there. But I, I, I love the, the the moments with Doppler. We go back to the Watchtower. Or, sorry, the Bell. I was saying Watchtower. I think it's Justice League, man. We go back to the Bell and, <laughs> like, this is so funny, you see Dude. fucking like Wendell right. dancing. Struggling. Like, oh, like, Damn, that's a lot Struggling of stairs. Hard. Like, bro, Rainy <laughs> Black would have been there like two seconds. You know what I mean? Like, he just would have teleported there, and Rainy Pink would have been there two seconds. Like, I like he has like a disadvantage in that regard. Like he, like I'm saying, he has to have some power to compensate. <laughs> like, they, there has to be something he could do that's really powerful that like compensates for the fact that he he has no aerial ability. I don't know, man. Otherwise, yeah. he's at a big disadvantage compared to the <laughs> other movies. <laughs> It reminds me of the Orville, how, like, it's kind of like Star Trek, but they don't have a teleporter. So, like, I got to get to engineering. And they just, like, book it as, like, they're getting, like, photon torpedoes, like, blown at them. And you just, like, run through a giant vessel. Like, yeah, flying and uh, transportation abilities are not uh, to be laughed at or scoffed at. Especially when we're talking cosmic, right? Yeah, at least make him a little faster, like, light on his feet. It plays plays (laughs) his abilities or something. Like, come on. Yeah, (laughs) like, he has no, like, movement ability. (laughs) I'm just curious to see how that works in the long run. Like, in a fight where... Like, he's fighting someone deadly 1v1. Like, how is he going to maneuver? Like like I said, there has to be something he could yeah. do. Because, like, yeah, maybe create projections of himself or something, like, actual do you guys, projections. Do you guys think in a few years, you know how, like, Uber Eats is, like, really pushing to do, like, convenience store food? Like, do you think eventually, like, you could order, like, a hammer at, like, a bell? You could just, like, get a gun and bring you a hammer. Like, that's, that's where oh we're going. We'll have freaking yeah. no, Trevor I, Noah I, eating a hammer and be like, see, it's this, you can't eat this, but, you know. Just or, uh, order I'm, McDonald's and have your Uber driver stop at Home Depot, grab yeah, your Yeah, Home Depot. Get, yeah, we'll yeah, okay. <laughs> get, get you some four by fours. You know? <laughs> but no, I mean that. Uh, I dread the day that happens because I feel bad for the delivery drivers already. Like, like, <laughs> the future's at your door. Boom, money printed. Anyway, so so he says he's not gonna fight her, and he's panting, and he says I'm not even here to convince you to do the right thing. I'm just I know you're already gonna do it. I'm just here to give you the hammer. I really like that. I really like that speech. Like it was really cool. I like that. I like that the like the agency he gives her there. I like that this is a choice she makes. It's not him trying to take credit for mm-hmm. it. Nothing like that. This is 100% her choice, and I like that he phrases it that way. He kind of gives her the power there to 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 act in that moment. You know what I mean? To seize that moment. I guess I should say. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it, I don't know if this is a reference, but all I can think of is how I always have to get hammered before I go to Taco Bell. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, that's why I got from this. But yeah, oh, I fun. I dig this. Um, yeah. And also, you know, Doppler would have found another way. He just made it like, it's like, you're going to do this. The way it was written was magnificent. Like, I don't know. Like, Joe Clark was an amazing addition. Like, that speech about uh, the future and stuff like that was really well written. And I just, this issue was great. Like, there's a lot. Like, it seemed like a quick one that you can kind of read quickly. But God damn, like, this series, like, it's not overrated in any way. Like, no. <laughs> like it's we gush but you know it's like god damn there's a lot here and yeah, it's that, really well yeah done. that no that was that, that was just a super good line i'm i'm not even here to convince you to do the right thing because i already know you're gonna do it i'm just gonna give you the hammer so what he says but no that that, that shit's that shit's awesome just does it and then and then i love always love uh like going going back through cowl the other week like seeing all seeing all the different ways they can display all the all the sound effects and stuff is like it's really yeah. cool just to see the different ways they can do it and here they they do it really cool again and with the awesome colors and everything just looks really sweet yeah, and I made the comment on the Discord, and I think I've said this before slightly, but I, I feel more secure saying it now or more confident. But I feel like 
the radiant black is kind of like a symbiote in the sense that, and not exactly, not exactly. Like I'm not saying, oh, it's exactly no, no, no. no. You look at the mean, panel with the sound right after. Yeah, so with the sound, and yeah. then and then the way that it bounces yeah. between him and Marshall, it's like a symbiote, like the way they yeah, wear it. Kate mode, we're even yeah, like exactly. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's interesting to see if if I'm curious to see whether this sound affects all of them in the same way or if it's just specifically his his radiant that gets affected that way. i don't know i'm just i, I want to see it, if, it didn't yeah. look like shift got affected by it too much like he but, was but still... shift, shift's not wearing a radiant though i'm talking about like radiance no i know but it, it affected yeah. mecca right like mecca yeah. got messed up by it but shift just and even even like even radiant or not you know it's just it's a loud annoying sound like it'll yeah. it was enough to paralyze nathan with or without the, the the radiant but shift just snuck up on him like nothing was going on yeah, the yeah. ears aren't always heavily armored, as opposed mm-hmm. to other areas of the body. Yeah, it might be it might be that he teleported after the the full brunt of the shockwave as well. It might be I don't know I, I don't really know enough about like. Or, sound. Honestly, I wouldn't put it past them if Shift had like because uh, he's close with Doppler and whatever. I wouldn't put it past oh, yeah. them if he had like, uh, like protection. Yeah, totally weird. Yeah, 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 something like yeah. that. Yeah, but yeah, we see one of the heroic moments, and I, I know Matt, I know Matt loved this moment. I, I, could, I visualized it as I was reading it, but fucking steps on the fart cushion. <laughs> makes what do you mean? I I like leather bound yeah. books and brandy. Yeah. I don't like that kind of stuff. I'm yeah, not gonna but, go watch Thieves and Butthead after this is over. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, it's it was just like. I just love like this little fucking. It's like kind of stupid, but I love it. He's like, "Were you just about to?" And he was like, "Backstab you, yeah." And he's like, "I mean, I'm still gonna kill you." <laughs> and fucking Marshall goes to save the day, and I, I just like, I love, I just love that whole page. That whole page is amazing. My, one of my favorite pages of this issue. I say that a lot because all the pages are amazing, but this is so much. This is so much funny things going on in that page, and I love getting. I love seeing shift get the shit beat out of him. It's always satisfying. And that's where, you know, we get the whole Nathan sees Marshall. He's like, Marshall, you're you know, alive. And he's like, oh, Radiant Black. And he's like, Pot Meat Kettle, can you feel it? Haha, <laughs> very funny. And then you get one of the coolest pages. Wow, I just said it again. And the whole issue where they're bouncing <laughs> the Radiant between each other, right? They're like tossing the Radiant off between each other. Oh, First of all, sweet. so cool. It's like it's basketball, radiant. baby. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. Radiant. <laughs> yeah. I pass it on. Punch for punch. One punch each, they're just not not being too greedy, but letting each other take the, take their own their own their own hit. But uh, no, this this was cool. I love every single panel having a different color too. Really, really makes it yeah. makes it look. We cool. can get scenes like Iron Man three where you had the armor coming onto people, and you can have like, yep. okay, we'll use the arm, and then we'll use this. You know, yeah. like oh, damn yeah. it, like it's gonna be tough for the artists. The artists got their work done. You got to do half in the outfit. Like, what are they wearing? Like half radiant, half this, but. God, that looked cool, and it's sweet. Like I was, it is so, I was so curious to this, like just seeing if they were both gonna have one and wear one, because we knew they were both, and we've seen that issue twenty cover. Yep. Uh, that that I got on that that phone case for freaking love that. Yeah. Ma- amazing. Yeah. They baited us again, man. They baited us again because as we see now, it seems like I, I mean we don't know they could change things by then. With these guys, you never know. I swear to God, they always they always like that's. That's why, like, the end of this issue, it looks like a certain thing, but I'm like, you never know with these guys. They always want it to look like a certain thing. But this page where both Marshall and Nathan are wearing half the Radiant each and then they're punching ship, that's just, like, iconic. Yeah, right I think that, that's, that's my that's favorite panel. This iconic. Show. Like, that's something if you made a TV show, like, it would have to be in there. It would have to be there. Um, One thing, that's what do we call them now? Are they the, radi- are they the Radiant's Black? <laughs> like, like, I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. It's going to be in Black's. The radiant. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the radiance black it might be grammatically correct. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know. The radiant black does not yeah. sound great. So yeah, right. I yeah. think that would have to be the radiance. But I was yeah, I think that this is a it's a really really awesome element. Like, do they have half the power now? Do they have half the gravity power? How far can they stretch this? Like, can they go into space? Can they go to the other ends of the earth? I think this is a really interesting uh, element. Yeah, definitely. And and like you can see in the end like. They're not prepared to lose. There's also like a there's the obvious reluctance to lose because who would want to lose? But there's also like you know they're kind of like sore losers. And you see Riley at the end. He's like, you know what? Fuck this. He just pulls out the switch, and he's like, me and my friend Jace, we worked at Morrow for 13 years. First of all, that's a huge important plot point right there because that they're in deep. They're in deep, and we saw like Morrow is a very big important player in the Massiverse. Not only are they the tech corporation that's taking over like San Francisco with their with their with their bots, but also here. 
we see that three characters, four characters have history with Mara. First of all, Excel was commissioned by Mara for that one assignment, and that's where he met uh, Shift. Shift worked for Mara because he did that, you know, like that bullshit for Mara where they hired him to go do that assignment to get the thing where he worked with Excel. And he also done previous assignments based on the way they speak. And then we see these guys too also work for Mara. So it's like, and they were selling part of their Epic Front bullshit to Mara as well. So it's like, I think Mara is going to be a big player even more down the line. I think we're going to see a lot more of Mara, and we started seeing a lot of them as soon as the Image books came out, Image exclamation mark the shift stories, and now they're ever since then they've been frequently showing up in the books, like sporadic. That especially Dead Lucky too. Yeah, yeah, they're like firmly a part of Dead Lucky, like every issue. But yeah, so we see that 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 freaking um, that uh, what's the word of the thing, the the Destiny Guardian looking thing. What is it called? The shell? What is the the little shells? What are they called? Oh, like the ghost looking thing? Like the yeah, drone? Yeah, the, the drone. drone. Yeah, yeah. The, so the drone from from a few issues ago that was recovered from uh, the, by the firemen from the scene of the wreckage, we see that uh, it's actually uh, they are gonna kind of blackmail Radiant Black, but not in the way that we thought. They're gonna release all the technology they have and basically allow technology. The idea is that they want to allow technology to catch up to the Radiant, so that he's gonna. Mm -hmm. struggle with with everybody even though he he beat he beat them so yeah obviously it's not over and this is a big deal my speculation is that a lot of countries are going to want to utilize this right like you have i I don't know how the scope of what kyle's going to do with this and how he's gonna how he's gonna approach this but i could definitely see companies like morrow wanting to take advantage of this information obviously we've already seen that they've developed guardian bots that look similar to the to the beings slash bots we see in that one issue where Eva and Marshall get teleported to space by accident. So there's a lot of things here that are very interesting, like uh, plot threads that connect to this, to this moment. But yeah, the 001 papers, the Alien Technology docs, uh, uh, they just got released to the world. And it's very interesting to see how this is going to change the future of Radiant Black, especially if like now we're talking the next arc, there's an alien artifact that lands on Earth and they have all these alien technology docs. Like it's going to be like aliens are going to go from... I don't, I, as we've seen in the world, it doesn't seem like they're super regular occurrence, but it seems like everyone's going to know about them now. So it's going to be interesting to see how that changes things. Yeah, for sure. It'll be pretty interesting to see what what happens with that, especially if the uh, the soon guy comes sooner than later, and like there's a world ending threat, then I feel like other governments and stuff would would be very interested in what's going on. Yeah, and then my, my, my favorite line of the whole issue is like, the next page, we obviously go back to our favorite new duo, uh, Sheer and uh, Excel. Uh, sorry, Sheer and, uh, yeah, Excel. And we see that they're <laughs> they're running away from the scene, and he said, looks like it's just us, Axe. Should have known the others would have paper hands. Very unbaby. I just want to say, Kyle, Joe, all of you, very unbaby. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I clap, I clap. I clap. I've never even so. heard that term. Now I'm yeah. at the loop. I, I don't even know these ones. Now. Yeah. Ever once. Yeah. I, I was actually shocked, and and a, ever since I I also just wanted to say ever since I thought um like I, I picture this dude as like the deep like I have told you guys from uh, from the <laughs> yeah. boys yeah. yeah every time it makes it so much better like it's just yeah. perfect now I'm gonna be sad anyone else who gets the role but or anyone else's <laughs> voices them but no it's fucking it's just good shit I don't know I don't know how it would he, be so how like, like the deep with his long hair like with the beard and long hair that like the like has yeah, he looks so funny. It, so yeah. Oh well, man. Like, oh. He could do it so well. He would look so funny too, like with the long hair. I would laugh. Such a dick. I, I love Sheer's face in the costume. Dick. You just see like lights up. You don't see the full thing. You just see like light little like issues, yeah. like parts of his face. You can't get a full yeah, because you so know he's just behind the mask. Such a douche. Yeah, yeah it is so too. Creepy, You're right. It's like so weird, bro. Like imagine you see some jolly ass fucking weird guy come at you saying weird shit, looking like that. <laughs> like, it'd be kind of freaky. I'm not gonna lie, but. I love I love the little zoom in on the back of the truck where you see where they put the frickin' sugar the, yes. into the, the thing to like oh what, my god dude that is so funny. what do you think the point of that is though because Wendell did that that was one of the items yeah. that I, I, I so the so I'm I'm not entirely sure what the fuck is going on there to be honest like I'm not gonna lie and say I understand what he did I think he either gouged the gas thing and it's leaking or he put sugar into it which somehow is fucking yeah, with it yeah. but. Yeah, he just put yeah. sugar in the gas. Is just fucking with the viscosity of the oil. And yeah, yeah, that makes clogging sense. Clogging yeah. the engine. It's like, yeah. ooh, that's the sound of the engine. It's like, go yeah. already. The engine's like, ooh, yeah. it's yeah. not yeah. working. Like, it actually clogs the engine. I, yeah, I just Googled sense. it. Yeah, it, if yeah. you if you put sugar in the in the fuel or, or the gas tank or whatever, it, it fucks with it. It clogs it. So if there's too yeah. much, it might just cause the truck to stop. So 
Okay. There you go. Sweet. Maybe we'll so see I that. I put cinnamon in my gas tank, and it was. <laughs> I love that. That was fucking. No, that was that was fucking awesome. That was awesome. Just all these callbacks. Like this was one of those. Like you go, you read through the issue, you see it, and then you're like, fuck. You turn back to the beginning, and you're like, oh shit. But yeah, there's a shirt, yeah. There's everything. And this is just this, their first awesome. go, right? Like we're probably gonna see better suits on these guys too. Like the suit that's like a prison suit and stuff. Is that XL? Like I, I'm still not like yeah. It is XL. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. you could get a better looking suit than that, right? We're not just gonna get like CW suits. We'll probably get like better stuff. Sorry to insult CW, but I mean, <laughs> where's the lie? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, no, I'm interested to see where this goes because there were some growing pains in establishing the, the rose gallery. Like I could feel like I knew what we were doing and like I didn't hate it. It was still radiant black. We got amazing stuff in between. But now I'm like, all right, now we get to enjoy the fruits of the labor of building the rose gallery. We get this awesome little heist. And it, this was awesome. Like this whole thing, these last couple issues, we got a martial death, which we're now unfazed by main character deaths because we know. Also, I would like to talk about that. So did he die? Like, did he, he didn't die? Was he close to death? No, no, he didn't die. I think he was close to death. And that's what they say in the next day. He says, I'll give you yeah. this. Now drowning harder than it looks. And he says, okay. we were trying yeah. to keep five guys from killing you, which is a hell of a lot He's harder. He's just fine. They, uh, yeah. And then, and then they say, this is the thing I think is important, that it might be subtle. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is Kyle's problem. He gets us reading too much into things because you, you write this book very well. And, there are a lot of sneaky things, but uh, he says, I'm having trouble describing how this feels. It's different. Like, and then Nathan says the way you expect twins to talk. And then he says, kind of. So it seems like they're in sync together also. Like, not only are they synced to the Radiant, but they're also a little bit more synchronized together or synced yeah. together. So from from the physical, from the actual physical aspect of it. Yeah, maybe like when you put the Radiant on once, it kind of like just power and it heals you up to 100. Just kind of rejuvenates yeah. you a little it's bit. It's like making an Xbox know. profile. You know, I love I love their their change of heart towards each other though. He says like what does he says? He says besides races are better as relays, and then says, Nathan says so. Then maybe this is the way it was always uh, supposed to be. I mean we found the radiant together. Maybe that's what Mento meant by, huh? Actually, where would he go? And then this is the fucking funniest okay. page. I I posted it. It's like I don't think people understood why I said this was wholesome. This was wholesome because look at this poor guy just waiting there at the fucking bus stop in his civilian clothes after saving the day out of like this poor guy literally just went to the fucking convenience store, bought some random shit, saved the fucking day, went to a random woman he doesn't even know, gave her the hammer. This dude just like went so hard, and now there he is, the poor guy waiting at a bus stop after his car got crushed. Like, man, come on. Like, how can you not feel for him? Look at this guy, man. Like, Nathan should have definitely fun. given him a lift. Right yeah, bro, there. he should have given him a lift. Like, he's just sitting there. <laughs> and Excellent. he's like, and he just tells him, like, oh, like, I'd give you a lift, but you got to be there for a reason, right? And I'm just like, oh, my God, dude. That's so fucking, like, ugh. You know? <laughs> it's just, like, a funny thing to say. He used to work for a driver. He's used to picking up people and getting to where they need to go, too. Yeah. So it's just like, come on, dog. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, everybody, the, the talk of the town, of the radiant town has been this line here. You know, they, they have this sort of awesome exchange where, you, say, you know, they talk and then fucking Wendell says, I'm just sorry I couldn't save Marshall, but you need to know a sacrifice will not be in vain. Like, what? I, I thought when I first read that, I thought like I read the wrong book or like I got like a bad draft or something. I was like, wait, what the fuck? And then I finished and I was like, oh, and sacrifice. He's like, Marshall's alive. I think we're sharing the radiant now. And he's like, but that's not how he's like, I guess you were right about the future being blurry. Anything is changeable, right? Anyway, I'd offer to fly you home, but you're probably at the bus stop for a reason. Really hope I can pay you back sometime, though. I mean, you could have just paid him back right there, buddy, but whatever. After all, we don't do this alone. Thanks, Wendell. And then Wendell says, oh, God, this is wrong. He's going to kill us all. And that's where everybody's speculating. Lots to unpack there. Nathan? Yes, exactly. He's talking about Nathan. He's talking about Marshall. Yeah. We've it's seen very- the future evil Nathan. It, exactly. We've seen a future with evil Nathan, but that was a dream. So it's really it's really hard to tell if that was actually if there was like substan- it's like a substantial I- I ground for discussion. Did Marshall or- have to die for Nathan to be heroic is what I'm thinking to be a hero and not go down a dark path. That's what I'm thinking. Also, also like that moment in, in Supermassive. Yeah, we did see the futures of each individual. And that begs the question, was that Marshall? Like the Marshall Phantom soon guy. Yeah, is Marshall suit guys? Is like, is that Marshall or is like, because it's like, oh shit, you, you, know you mean, what I mean? So maybe Marshall went to business for himself and fucking went and is like, <laughs> later in this, um, if this war comes in and Nathan versus Marshall, the two guys we see drinking are going to war, like this book, like, we don't know what this is. People still don't know what this book actually is. 
So that could be what it, I. But, so but, but I like, that's the thing. That's the thing. Soon guy could be a good guy. People just assumed he was a bad guy. Like yeah. you know what it reminds me of that scene. You know the scene in, in Lord of the Rings where Gandalf the White shows up and he brings the entire fucking army with him. Like it could be that scene. It could be that. It could be like Radiant the White showing up with his new fucking Radiant and he brought his entire crew with him to save Earth. You know what yeah. I mean? Like like you know it. These guys are fucking with us. That's all I, I know. That that the only thing I know 100% is true is that these guys are fucking with us. That's what they've been doing it the whole time uh, since the title started. They like to misdirect us. They like to, to mess with us. And there's not, there hasn't been much to suggest one or another thing either way. And they play in two volumes. And this exactly. would be something to think about. Exactly. And the, the, and it's it really could go either way. Like Matt said, like they showed Nathan evil. They showed Marshall evil. They showed both of them saying questionable yeah. things. They've showed both of them developing oh, good and bad ways. So it's like, it really could go either way and i know people are saying oh but like really does look like this or that i agree i agree it really does look like this but it also really does look like that you know what i mean so yeah. um I, yeah I not too bad did they mean to make it look like that on purpose to lead yeah. you a certain way or exactly way or another but no, no i i did want to say just real quick on that that very last panel um he looks exactly like john carlo to me i don't know why just, <laughs> yeah i was thinking that too that no time. joke yeah. That, that that would be my dream radiant yellow casting but he's also every dream casting. yeah, yeah. So. no I, I i love that idea because my only complaint about john carl here was that we everybody always wants to cast him as the same corporate villain right it would be super interesting to see him because he's such a good actor play like a hero or or professor x or something i would love That's to the problem with breaking bad who the hell are you going to play after playing saul or yeah. walter white <laughs> or gus yeah. like vince yeah. gilligan and then peter gould they hit it in the park so far that like people are going to be playing catch up like ryan they know those are the best roles but anyways continue yeah i just i feel bad I, like for those actors with so much talent they get typecast because you know they probably <laughs> would love to do different things right and it's just like he's been typecast so much the last i loved in the mandalorian the villain he plays the mandalorian is actually like yeah I yeah. like I love the way he works. He's not about beating her. Like he's smart. It's like kind of like Thrawn, more mental than physical. But yeah. Yeah, 100. percent Yeah, he was such a menacing guy. It was more scary. With yeah, 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 no, 100. percent And overall, this issue I think was awesome. And there was just so much to unpack in this issue, like you said. Um, I think this issue gave us so many little gems for the future. Like obviously, one of them is the the bro, the bro ship between Exxon and Sheer. I just thought that was so funny. Like it just. It's like, you know, when you see Hal and Flash for the first time, you're like, holy shit, these guys are like peanut butter and jelly. And it's just like, that's how it felt with Exxon and Shear. <laughs> just, they just work well together, man. They just, it's, I want to see more of that. Yeah. My other question is, now that Doppler, and this is the first question I had after I read it, not counting the obvious questions of what just happened in the last page, all that good stuff. Is Doppler, since she had a change of heart, does this mean they're not the Fab Five anymore? Because that lasted all of, like, what, an issue? <laughs> Were they <laughs> yeah. ever the Fab Five? Really? <laughs> I mean, they say it. It's just, I don't know. But... I know. And, and yeah. how, how is she going to keep recharging her suit? If she's if her and Marshall and or Nathan become friends, I mean, she could just get free charge off of them. Yep. My thought is, like, the first thing I would think after this issue is, like, Shift's probably going to go looking for a pest. Like, he's probably going to want to hurt her or, or, you know what I mean? Like, I can't imagine Shift's not upset about what happened there and i can't imagine he didn't know that after the huge sound wave explosion that like she helped them do you know what i mean i have a question is wendell a sugar daddy now we've seen he has kids and he also <laughs> is delivering sugar too so like that's one thing to keep keep an eye on <laughs> yeah dude my first question when i saw the kids thing my first question was like is that a possible vision of the future or is that the future or is that the present or whatever like i i, I mean it's probably the case like he has kids oh I'm next issue is going to be lit we can do anything yeah, like he yeah. could he could have already lost a family that could be a potential future he could have lost him like i already i've already lost it all so and, and then yeah. every day you're seeing what it's like to lose it all or potential futures or maybe this is the path that he knows to maybe like make sure the ratings go in the same place to make sure the war goes the right way maybe he had to give up his family so he couldn't commit to like helping raise a child and be a husband maybe he had to go and do stuff that might make you look like an asshole like a rogue son esque character but maybe you're saving the day in ways that they can't imagine yeah and uh we have we have i am wendell coming very soon that's going to be the next issue it's just like i am legend but i am wendell but no matt actually came up with the the best title for the next episode of the podcast you, you want to every wendell all at once yeah baby yeah, every wendell everywhere all at once yeah that's the 
That's gonna be the title for the next. That that's podcast. The, that's, yeah. that, that's the perfect title. That is like the perfect title for the next issue. And go see that movie, by the way. If you haven't seen uh, Everywhere All at Once yes. or whatever, it's it's a yeah. I mean, I've yeah, never if seen, you haven't seen that, what the fuck are you doing with your life? To be yeah, honest. get your hot dog like, fingers, type away, and go and like order a ticket or order. No, you'll get that joke. I'm not. I'm not calling anyone. Anything. But no, it's yeah. a great movie. Like a twenty four, don't miss. And yeah, t- top oh. two, top three this year, easily, easily, easy, so, easy. Yeah, my number one for sure. Yeah, I, I would say number one. I, I can see why for some people like it wouldn't be number one. But but no, yeah. top top three, easy, easy, like no question about it. And but, if you have uh, kids, Marcel the Shell is amazing. If you don't have right. kids, Marcel well, the Shell. Uh, what's is what's amazing. the name of the the daughter in the movie? I think she deserves like a nomination. Oh, yeah, no, she, she, she was, she was, she was great. so good. She was so good. Yeah, she was awesome. Joy, Joy, I think Joy. Yeah. So yeah, um, overall. You got a school of business issue. too. Okay. Yeah, we got a school yeah, of business. That, that was, uh, interesting, mm-hmm. interesting to yeah. say the least. Yeah. Melissa <laughs> Flores, Becca Carey, letters, Sachi, uh, Adira Weira, art, and uh, yeah, that was an interesting. <laughs> it's, it's always good to get uh, Marshall School of Business. I like this one. This business idea is is a little skin crawly or skin uh, slicey. It was uh, it's interesting. I like it's, it though. I. No. It's definitely out there. I don't know how practical it is though. I mean, I, I was, I just, I, I just love my school business. So I'm not even gonna. But uh, yeah, I, I, I hope we get more of these in the future. It's always a delight. I, the fact that we even just got one in this issue is, is, is huge. So thank you. And, and we did get Rogue Sun Volume One as well recently. A lot of people have been tagging us. Yeah, thanks for Jordan um, tagging us. In it's the, really nice. I, I bought yeah. one for my dad for his birthday yesterday, and uh, yeah, it keeps up with images. Like, uh, come on, the production quality, it's amazing. You got like. Like, you'd be shocked if it wasn't fantastic. Like, this how quality these image uh, uh, trades have been and all the work. Like, come on. It's broke sign. Yeah. No, 999 too. Yeah, no yeah. excuse. No exactly. Excuse. I, I was surprised. There's some people who, like, keep up with all the Massiverse stuff. But uh, they they went today. They went uh, today to... Uh, sorry. I know people who keep up with all the Massiverse stuff. But I heard that, like, people just... Didn't even read Rogue Sun. They've been waiting to get the trade. And I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know how you have the patience for that. Because for me, and and I know for you guys, some of you agreed that, and this isn't shade or anything like that. This is credit. I thought the first six issues of Rogue Sun were a little bit better than the first six issues of Rain Black. Like, it just, yeah. it just, it just, Am just I apples to, say to that? apples. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, I just, think... it's not, it's not like, a pre- it's just preference. It, it's not, I, I still and like And it's Rain not like Black you're saying Rain Black was bad. It's just no, no, Rogue no. Sun was. Ra- Ra- Rogue Sun was excellent. And it, 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 it's credit to, to Ryan and everybody working on the book. It's not meant to put down Rain Black. Rain Black's fucking amazing. And we all know that everybody, we are the Rain Black podcast for a reason, right? We love talking about Rain Black. We love Rain Black. But yeah. Ro- Rogue Sun was, sif- like, it was so good. It blew, blew me away. And, and the, Radiant Black is still, I still think Radiant Black is better overall, but Rogue Sun, man, like, I just, it's, they're both right there for me together at the top. Nathan's death hit me hard, but the reveal of, with the, with the killer was really good, was really, like, I, it's, you're comparing, like, it's like comparing, like, you know, Halo to Zelda. It's like, either way, you're laughing, you're dealing with some greatness, but yeah, if, yeah. It, they're both fantastic. So if you haven't checked out Rogue Sun, I highly, highly recommend it. Now, you like Charlie said, you got no excuses. Ten bucks for a trade that collects the first six issues. It's way cheaper than getting the issues, and it's such a beautiful trade. Where it came out very nicely, the gloss perfect is for sharing beautiful. and getting yeah. your friends in on it too. Exactly. So highly recommend Rogue Sun. Check it out, and you, I guarantee that you would not be disappointed. And especially if you like, if you want something that is faster paced, a lot of people complain that the first three issues, four issues, Rain Black, that it was a bit slow paced. Yeah, yeah Rogue Sun is much right faster. I right think it's just it. because we had a script in there and we have Nathan write the short story and people had to read prose. I think. Oh that's my god, I have to read. <laughs> I have to read. <laughs> well, and I, I'm a writer. I'm despicable. I'm a writer, and even I was like, mm. <laughs> and it was fantastic. It was like eating your vegetables. Oh. Want to thank you, Kyle. Oh yeah. No, no, I, I, I loved it. I love everything Radio Black is doing. So yeah, I don't, I don't want it to seem like it's ever shaved. It's more credit to, to what these type, what these people created in the Masterverse are doing. They're just doing amazing things in comic books right now. And, and yeah, but, but like that is to say that after issue six of Radio Black, the story, um, it just went to the next level. It get way better. And you know, we got all these things that happened. And you know, like spoiler, like we got the animation, the Radio Black verses and everything. So it's like Radio Black has been just raising the ceiling for what you could do with comic books and what do you guys think is going to be in uh super massive too nathan or marshall maybe both uh, uh-huh. both <laughs> i would say both i think yeah, yeah. 
Supermassive 2, you have two of yeah, them. Two. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. But also, also, someone said, someone said, I don't know if it was one of you, I don't think it was, maybe it was, maybe it was, I don't know, but someone said, someone in the Discord said, uh, they put the picture of the, you know the Supermassive 2 picture when they announced Daniel and Nicole was going to be working on it, and then he did the picture of, like, the headshot of, like, the four of them with Dead Lucky, yeah. Rogue Sun. Yeah, 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 so yeah. someone pointed out that, like, to the right, there's kind of, like, an open space, and they were like, it looks like someone else is going to be there, uh, but they got photoshopped out. So maybe, you know, maybe there's another Radiant Black. Maybe it's no the one. The MCU treatment. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's been <laughs> two years, and we've had three spin like, two, like, other series, like, spread out, not including Radiant Red. So, like... So, well, no, we even Inferno Go Red, so there's already, like, three other people before, exactly. so it's not shocking to think there's, like, a fifth. Who knows? Let's let's Google anyone that Kyle Higgins has ever worked with, and then, you know, and, like, yeah. seriously, like, but who knows? Or any, mm. Sorry, sorry, I didn't cut you off. No, I, 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 I was just saying, I was just going to say, I was just so excited. I was going to say, when we first read Supermassive, we had no idea that Lucky was going to be in there, even just for a cameo. So, like, yeah. they might they might have a cameo of, of no one or someone else in, in Supermassive 2 just at the end. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is expanding like a black hole. Like it's crazy how how big this franchise is and the quality they've been able to like maintain and stories they've been able to tell. Like we could get different genres. Like we are like like Rogue Sun's more fantasy and stuff like that. We could get like a noir story. Like I mean, we already had Cowl, which is kind of like noiry in the way that it's noiry is not a word. As you can tell, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Like we can get different kind of genres and stuff like that. It can be like how the MCU is branching out to do, like sitcoms now and this and that. Like. It, the sky is the limit, and uh, you know, I'm. It's crazy. Like two years from now, who even knows what we're talking about? Two years ago, we didn't think, or like a year and a half, we didn't think it'd be like, oh yeah. And so this like one comic that we all thought was awesome has three spinoffs, and its second crossover was announced, and it's got a helmet and action figures and a short. Like it's it's actually insane, and we're so spoiled. Yeah, I think Ryan said the other day in like an interview um, with Matt Skrnier. I think he said that like he said like. I, I really like where the Masterverse is at right now in terms of size and titles, and I hope it doesn't get much bigger than that. And I, I really, I really, really echo that sentiment and agree. Like, if you want to add one more ongoing, I feel like we could make that work. But I think beyond that, it's going to get a bit too complicated in terms of ongoings, just ongoing. I'm speaking purely ongoings. In terms of limited series, they can do whatever they want. But ongoings, I think once you expand being like four or five titles, it's going to get very hard for people to keep up with all yeah. those. But And, and I, I fully understand and respect that what Michael said that you don't need to read all the titles to keep up with them. But I do love all the characters. So screw you guys for making such awesome characters. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Keep up the, the <laughs> awesome work. And uh, yeah, no, just looking forward to all the new stuff. Anyways, I think, I think that's pretty much it uh, for today. I'm just going to check my notes here make sure we got everyone. Everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we covered everything. I, I have a note that just says fart cushion, exclamation mark. <laughs> so, yeah. That's one of my notes also says uh, MVP. Um, oh! yeah. Oh, there is one note here that I forgot to point out. Yeah. What Fucking else? Marshall. Oh, wait. Someone says he's got the high ground at one point in this. Uh, yes. I love the Star Wars reference. Yes. yes. So he's uh, got yeah, the yeah, high yeah, ground. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, he can have the high ground wherever he wants. He can hover the it, high it, ground. It, it, was it that sinister six shot? I think so. Was, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, it was yes, Axel. It is, I just looked at Axel. Like, he's got the high ground. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so so yeah, I, I just love that. I, I, I forgot I didn't forget to point that out. Love that little homage to Star Wars. Love that. Oh, the, ground, the high ground or sand, like he's obsessed with terrain, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 the funniest shit is that the newest Darth Vader issue that just came out um, yeah. like two weeks ago is literally a cover of Darth Vader covered in sand. And the whole issue is about how he doesn't like sand. And they literally flash back to the fucking scene in the moment where he talks about like how it's so coarse and he doesn't like it. <laughs> And I, I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Read read that issue, and trust me, you'll find it funny. But uh, um, yeah, I I love this issue overall. Really did. I really love this issue. I give it like a nine out of ten. Just awesome overall. Can't wait to uh, see what happens next. It, this one had everything. It had jokes, had actions, had you know some a little bit of tragedy, <laughs> depending on how you interpret it. It had back you know attempted backstabbing. It had fart cushions. It, it really it had everything. So. Um, yeah, just just awesome overall, and uh, looking forward to Radiant Black number eighteen. I, I I can't even begin to comprehend what the team's gonna have in store for us there. Yeah, and if this podcast rang a bell for you, uh, throw us a like on YouTube or uh, you know do whatever like upvote way to show your support. It goes a long way for us and uh, getting the show out there and stuff like that. So thanks a lot for all the support. Obviously, the Discord is amazing. Like, sometimes Basudo just pops in and is like, yeah, I've got anyone to ask, have any questions. So I'm, I'm bored or whatever right now. Like, it's amazing. So join us on the Discord. Links are readily available. And, uh, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. This isn't an outro or anything. I'm just saying thanks. Yeah, I really right. appreciate the support. It's been amazing.
Yeah, we just hit 800 followers on Twitter. So thank you, everyone, for that. We'll do, like, a nice giveaway of 1,000. We'll not announce it yet. I'll get it. We'll announce it closer. It's going to be something special because it's 1,000 followers. Don't forget to join us. Uh, yeah, check us out on social media, Radiant Black Pod, on Twitter and Instagram. And um, don't forget to check out Radiant Black Podcast Community Trivia this Saturday. I don't know when this episode is going to come out. I'm, I'm hoping to have it out September 2nd, Friday. So if you listen by then, maybe you'll have a day. But check us out September 3rd, 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern. We're going to do Red and Black Trivia. Uh, what we're doing is we're hosting, uh, it's just like last year, we're hosting anybody who wants to come. It's going to be all on Discord, no cameras or anything, just just uh, multiple choice on the Discord and then a little bit of surprise. Just audio, regular headphones yeah. are fine. Yep. And uh, there's a grand prize, and it's already posted in the Discord and the and Reddit everywhere. It, yes, I posted on Reddit for those who are not in the Discord. And, uh, yeah, come check out Radiant Black uh, Trivia. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be prizes, maybe even some surprises along the way. And, yeah, stay radiant, everyone.